Hello, people of the internet. Unky Joe here, Unky Joe's Playhouse. Today, another exciting episode at Unky Joe's Playhouse. We're going to get ESXi installed on our new, well, new to us, donated Dell R620 server. So I, I had a uh, subscriber reach out to me, uh, oh, it's been over a month ago now, and said, Joe, I know you want a Dell R620. I happen to know where I can lay my hands on one, and I will send it to you free of charge. So being the king of cheap, I said, sure, send it on to me if you want to, and uh, I will graciously, I will, you know, give you a shout out. And he said, no, 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 no need for a shout out. It's a, uh, it's just a donation, and it, I want it to be private. And I was like, okay. So the first thing I did was check to make sure there were no drugs in the unit. <laughs> you know, no Chinese spyware or anything else like that. And so uh, the unit is here. Uh, so, of course, the first thing I need to do is rip it open and show it all to you. So let's, let's get to that video right now. So here she is on my roll-around cart. She's a beauty, isn't she? So it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, two and a half inch disc trays on there and uh, he did include the disc trays when he sent it to me and uh, there are no discs in there and no plans to put any disc in there for now. I wanted this unit because it has a, a 1U footprint uh, and it has some uh, powerful uh, dual Xeon CPUs in there uh, which make it ideal for virtualization. Now the beauty of this unit is that these are two and a half inch dry bays and I could later fill them with SSDs uh, as my needs evolve. But uh, this is a picture of the front of the server as I received it. And now it's time for my favorite part, and I'm sure it will be your favorite part too. Let's open this bad boy up and see what makes it tick. Or bad girl. Yeah, we'll call her a bad girl. So there you go. You, you know, you just gotta love Dell's engineering. I love how they, you know, they label everything clear. Oh, I just pulled the baffle off. Uh, and, you know, inside the front lid of the Dell, they tell you how to lay out the RAM and tell you what parts are removable when the system is powered up and tell you what parts are not removable once the system is powered up. So they do a really good job of, of laying everything out. And uh, let me tell you, these, these engineers at Dell really know their stuff. Uh, so here we go, as you can see in the front of the unit is the dry bay trays. It's also, this unit has a CD, DVD, ROM unit. So uh, in theory I could get an adapter later and, and put an SSD drive in there. It has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cooling fans. But this unit is actually very quiet when it's running. Uh, and you can uh, see there where I'm pointing to the fans. Yeah, that's what I'm doing, pointing to the fans. Now, uh, this Dell has a baffle that's behind the fans that actually covers the RAM. So here's a better view of that. I'm pointing to the H310 uh, mini SAS controller. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, I'm going to need to flash that. I'm going to need to get help from Art of Server. You see the cable that comes up and feeds the backplane because I just want to use that controller in IT mode and later probably fill this thing with SSD drives uh, in order to get, you know, really good bang for my buck. Uh, but if I move the camera back here, that baffle uh, does not, I misreported, it does not cover the RAM. It just directs airflow over the RAM and the CPUs without covering them. And then if you notice uh, where there are no RAM sticks, there are baffles in there, and that is to ensure that the air gets routed correctly. Uh, it's a design, I guess, by, by Dell. This unit has two 750-watt silver power supplies in them, so they, are, they have really good efficiency. Uh, it only has 32-gig uh, RAM. I was pointing to the USB key I installed. That's where it plugs into for, you know, for if you're using something like... Uh, VMware ES6i or whatnot, and then we'll come to the back of the unit, and the the unit is I think it's I think it's 19 or 20 inches long. I don't know. I have to get you the measurements on it. But this unit also came. There's the internal H310 
controller that will not work under VMware, by the way. Uh, there's the RAM sticks, I'm pointing to the dual uh, Xeon uh, version 1 CPUs. This unit came with, uh, I call these mezzanine cards. They're, they're, you can change the uh, port layout by replacing this card. This one came with two 10 gig ethernet ports uh, and then two one gig ethernet ports. I wasn't aware of that until I received the unit. And I looked on the back and it clearly said 10 gig. So I'm, I was like a cow over the moon uh, because it meant I didn't have to stick a Mellanox card in there, uh, which they're growing, they're growing uh, rapidly out of support. So now this unit also includes two 16X wired uh, PCI Express uh, uh, car, uh, places to plug cards into. And it is wired for uh, 16X. Uh, slot one is for CPU two, and then there's another one on the other side for CPU one. So in theory, I could put a low power video card in here and, and do a pass through to virtual machines if that's something that I wanted to do later. Uh, the unit weighs about half of what a Dell R710 does. And uh, yeah, I just like the one U design of this for my needs much, much better. Uh, the reason I prefer the 2U on the Dell R710s is because I like three and a half inch hard drives in those bad boys. Uh, but with, uh, with you know, two and a half inch drive bays becoming ubiquitous now, especially on enterprise gear, I was hap happy to get this one U server. Uh, and in hindsight, I probably should have bought a Dell R620 or a 640 to begin with instead of even uh, futzing with the uh, Dell R710s, even though I, I still do love them. So we're going to log on to our uh, machine over here. This initialization of the firmware takes forever. Now I've mapped my virtual media, my VMware. And we're going to boot off that virtual device when this comes out, once it gets through this stage of collecting system inventory. <clears throat> okay, so we'll go to the BIOS boot menu. I'm gonna close that. The virtual media is connected. You can see that up here. All right, so we're gonna come down and boot off of our virtual CD. And boot into the ESXi for the Dell. Press enter. obligatory warning that in the future it may not work on this version of ESXi with the CPUs I have. I press enter, press F11. So I'm going to go ahead and, and press enter and I'm going to have it uh, so at this point I could upgrade or I could install. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and do an install have it wipe out the configuration that's already there. I'll go ahead and set a super secret password. Yeah, I think this is what I decided last time. You know, I'm wondering if I uh, because I can put an SSD in here. Yeah, and this CPU support warning and then I get an unsupported devices warning so uh, CPU may not be supported in future releases that's fine the thing that's troubling is I don't know whether that is the uh, H310 controller or if it's the uh, if it's a 10 gig uh, no I don't have a Mellanox con uh, in here so it's got to be the uh, the H310 so I'm just going to do enter to continue and F11 to install and then we'll let it install all right so it says we should remove the installation media so we're gonna do that we're gonna disconnect you can't see me doing that but I did 
press enter to reboot and it will take you a short time to complete so you're not going to sit through that you're going to see when it comes back up to the boot up screen because I have some super secret magic to do behind the scenes while nobody's watching uh, so that it boots properly uh, and uh, yeah so I'll do that and you uh, sit tight Yes, this one's going to be 8, so let's go ahead and uh, let's hit F2 here. And we should be able to log in with our super secret password. I'm going to configure our management network and come in here and turn this on to static. Let's set our static IP address. It's 5.8. That's done. DNS, we want to give it a different host name. So we'll do this E. Let's put our caps lock on ESXi7 Dell R620 1. That looks good. Enter. I'm not going to turn IPv6 IPv off because I don't feel like rebooting it again. And so there we go. We got 5.8. We've got our uh, host name set up. It's ready to go. Next thing to do is to uh, log in and do a little bit more configuration. So we'll log into this IP address next. All right. So here we are at the VMware login screen. So we'll go ahead and log in with that super secret password that we created earlier. And I do encourage everyone to make sure these passwords are complex for your own protection now i'm not going to save it so here we go we're, we're running version uh, 7 build uh, 4942 it's on the dell power edge 620 we have the 12 cpus 24 threads 32 uh, gig of memory yeah i'm gonna upgrade the memory later but right now that's enough to get us going now uh so let's just look around here so under storage we don't have any storage we're going to need to add some which we will do Remember, I'm using shared storage on my Synology FS1018. Thank you, Sasha, for that gracious donation uh, for our data store. So if we come in here to, to networking, we'll go to our physical NICs. And this one has the uh, 1,010 gigabit card, daughter card in there. I didn't know that when I received it, but the person that donated to me. So it's got a four port uh, mezzanine card, I call it in there. Two of those ports are 10 gig uh, Ethernet, regular uh, Ethernet ports, and two of those are one uh, gigabit Ethernet ports. So, yay, we don't have to put a Mellanox card in here. However, it does not work with the internal uh, 310 uh, SAS controller, uh, and I don't think that's on uh, uh, the supported uh, list because when I had it enabled, it could not see it to install onto a spinning roast hard drive. But that's a little concern to me. This machine is not going to be used for its storage. It's going to be used for its uh, the fact that it's got lots of cores and can hold lots of memory. And it's a tiny little 1U machine. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do is get your time set correctly. So I we'll want to come down here to manage and go into time and date. And right now you'll see that it is getting the uh, UTC time. And that is corresponding with my time down here. Well, you can't see it, but... It is 1224 on my computer. Um, and so what you have to do is come here under edit NTP, click this little checkbox, tell it to start and stop with a host. And I have a DNS server on my local network, so I don't need to worry about it finding this. But normally what you would do is pick an NTP, uh, NTP server that is close to you and put its IP address in there. You can also do multiple ones, click on save and, and then you're done. Uh, the problem is, is if you do that and you refresh, you're not going to see this NTP service status is running. And it used to be you could come here to actions and click on it, but for some reason in the uh, Edge browser, uh, the actions button is not working. I haven't tried it in Chrome, but you know, Edge is Chrome based now, or Chromium based, should be working. So I found what I had to do is come over here to services and then go down to NTPD and click on the start button. 
and then once I did that, it worked. And it also lasted through a reboot. So uh, once you get that done, you want to make sure your time is correct on your server. Get that done. And now the next time thing we'll do is we'll set up some shared storage. All right, we're on our Synology flash station, the FS1018. And I've created a shared volume uh, called NFS Lab ESXi. And you'll just see I put it on uh, my uh, 877 gigabyte volume one, which is, let me go look here. Yeah, volume one is my RAID F1. So that's a, a bunch of uh, 256 gig SSD drives. You'll see they're all operating normally and uh, they're healthy, the healthy status. And these are used SSDs that a client uh, gave to me. Some are Samsung, some are light on, light on IT. Uh, and then I've got a couple of SanDisk Ultras. So uh, it's just called nfslab.esxi. And then under here, under NFS permissions, I have given my uh, ESXi host uh, at 5.8, that's the Dell 620 read write access. And uh, here is the mount path right here. So we're gonna need this volume one NFS lab dash ESXi. We'll need to remember that. So if we come over here to the Dell and go to storage, we can go add a data store. Got that right. Volume oh, four, ah, there's the problem. Uh, Windows World. NFS Lab dash ESXi. Just make sure. Yeah, forward slash NFS Lab dash ESXi. Now, hopefully, this time it will work. And it did. And uh, so now if we go out to our data store browser, you'll notice I've already got a virtual machine in here. I've got some ISOs. I've got a Windows 10 image and a Windows 10 Pro test image. And all of these I created uh, when I was doing my initial evaluation and testing. So uh, I can now, in essence, just, if I right click, I could create or register a VM and I could register an existing virtual machine click on next uh, let's see select one or more virtual machines a data store directory so I'm going to choose my gold image here select that uh, next and finish and there it is so there's my Windows 10 Pro 2004 gold. I'm going to do that with the rest of the VMs on there. Next. And keep in mind I'm doing this live. There's my CentOS 7. We'll do that. I suppose I could select more than one. And register. And uh, 10 Pro test. Next. Yeah, and hopefully, so all three of those virtual machines that I created earlier, I was able to re-register. So yet another benefit of using shared storage, it just uh, gives you a lot of flexibility when it comes to, uh, when it comes to uh, sharing uh, virtual machine images and ISO files, et cetera, et cetera. Now I'm only doing this with a single machine and in the course of creating our lab, uh, we'll we'll do more advanced topics like uh, you know installing a, a vSphere and uh, uh, the vSphere or vCenter server and then migrating machines and that kind of thing. So uh, there you go. That's how easy it is to set the time, uh, get your shared storage configured, and even uh, import a virtual machine or two that I created earlier. So now that we've imported those virtual machines, let's go see out. Let's go out and see if we can actually start one of them up let's just make sure it's got four virtual cpus two gig of ram 
uh, 30 gig hard drive USB the VM network is connected we're not gonna need uh, we're not gonna need an ISO image to to mount there so we can come in here and edit and we can actually okay good it's not connected so cancel on that so let's go ahead and click on this and see if we can fire the virtual machine up Now I don't think I have VMware tools installed on this machine, so it's giving me that error in the background as you can see. And there you go, we've got a login screen for CentOS 7. It's one of my favorite versions of Linux is CentOS. Okay, so let's go back up here to virtual machines. Now I've also got a Windows 10 Pro machine with four CPUs, four gig of RAM, 48 gig hard drive. Let's see if we can fire that one up and if we we can get it running without any errors and actually log into it because this will be one of our test machines that I've run some benchmarks on. So just so you know, I've created this. I, I've already installed ESXi 7 on here prior to this and created all these virtual machines and got them up and running uh, in preparation for this demo. Um, so it's not like I'm doing this from scratch and it just gives you an idea of how flexible uh, flexible VMware is for uh, you know creating your virtual machines and using stared, shared storage I don't know why I call it stared storage dyslexia I'm even dyslexic when I speak now that's pretty sad Let's see if I can pull this screen out a bit here we go the nice thing that's the other nice thing about the console in VMware that the screen kind of keeps up automatically with you and uh, so yeah so here we are we booted up into the Windows virtual machine uh, let's see I should have some pictures in here uh, maybe not maybe it's under documents downloads maybe no tests there we go uh, so I did you know some Cinebench tests here running on this machine yeah, and it's, mind you, it's just booted up. So here's some Cinebench scores for this VM. Not anything to write home about, but, you know, not too bad. And uh, there's my speed test for Crystal Dismark. And I'll reveal those again when I do a comparison uh, on this unit as a, a, a VM host and on another server as a VM host as what kind of read and write speeds we get but there you go and the the vmware tools are installed on this so it's uh i believe they're installed let me just verify that yeah i don't see any yellow exclamation marks or anything and it does have the vmware svga adapter 3d adapter so yeah there you go uh, everything's up and running uh, the machine is running fine. I am still waiting on VMUG to get my new licenses for version 7. And then I'll pop those into them. So there you go. Uh, not exactly soup to nuts, but, you know, just showing you that ESXi 7 can be installed on that Dell R620 server that I that was graciously donated to my lab. And this is part like part one of getting the lab set up for ESXi. Um, but what we're going to do uh, in the next video is show you how to install vCenter and then add that as a server to vCenter as well as the Dell R620, among other things. So you got that to look forward to. So why back on the ESXi kick what, or the VMware kick? Well, I'm a VMUG user and I have more equipment than I know what to do with. So uh, what, I, what I've said earlier is I'm generating three different labs, a Hyper-V lab, a VMware lab and probably an XCP lab and I'm going to show you the differences between them and how to get them all basically set up and then show you how they can work with one another so um, you know if you're if your funds are limited and you want to do a home lab VMUG is your best bet for $200 a year you get access to 15 different pieces of software from VMware uh, to get in get your feet wet you know if you're looking to get a career started with VM uh, and want to know VMware under your belt there are cheaper, there are free ways to do this as well that work just as effectively, although they might be a little more complicated to use. 
Now, you know, the other question is, why am I not using Proxmox in this example? Well, I just don't have enough equipment to load Proxmox on stuff as well. Uh, and my good friend Morton over at uh, my playhouse, uh, he's doing Proxmox. Uh, and there's a bunch of other people out there on the on the interwebs uh, doing uh, doing Proxmox videos. So I really don't need to, to cover them. So as usual, we hope you found this video educational and informative. Or is it informative and educational? Give us a like down below. Please leave your comments in the comments section. Donate if you're so inclined. We take PayPal, Patreon. And we also utilize the YouTube join button for a buck ninety nine a month. You can help support this channel. We're over. We mirror all of our content over on Library and Odyssey, which are basically the same thing. And uh, eventually, <laughs> we'll get our bit bit shoot stuff back up and running. But it's been real low priority right now. And so, just as a reminder to everyone, I have a four way coming up, four way live stream coming up uh, called the Tech Quartet live stream. With Joe over at Cajoling Technologies, Willie over at Willie Howe Technologies, and I believe it's Tony over at Quick Tech Solutions. Uh, and that's set up for November 14th at 9 a.m. Central Time, my time, 10 a.m. Eastern. Uh, so hopefully you, I will see all of you over there. I, I don't know how all this is going to work out. Uh, Tony over at uh, Quick Tech is the guy who's supposed to be getting all this set up for us. So... Uh, we're just going to have random topics, and uh, I'm going to be doing a giveaway. I initially announced I was going to be giving away uh, an IBM uh, server, but uh, that's just logistically, it's not possible for me at this time, uh, and shipping that thing would be a monumental pain in the ass. But I am going to be giving away, uh, I've got it right there on the desktop next to the headphones, a, gr a Google Chromecast. Uh, I'll be giving one of those away uh, on as part of the live stream. So make sure you join us then November 14th, 9 a.m. Central, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And you can join us on any one of those channels and we'll be we'll be live streaming. Uh, we'll be live streaming uh, on that date. So thanks again for joining us. Please come and see us again. And don't forget, we'll see you on the other side.